breathe into the microphone. Um, no, actually, so so we 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 did that at pools. We had a finger back. I had so much fun doing that that we now have a martini at my new restaurant called the Pickleback Martini, and it's vodka and a, um, a shot of pickle juice. So, um, and it's funny because it's probably the least popular drink on the menu. Yeah. And, and, and people are in there, they go, this is disgusting, what is this? And I go, it's a pickleback, man, you gotta, it's, it's hilarious. It's like, you had to be there, it's, uh, so, it's like, it's like 15% successful. Like, the, the, you know, of every 10 people, like there's a one and a half people that really like it, but it's staying on the menu for a while. Uh, what is your second biggest failure? <laughs> my, what was my first? Oh, that? Oh, that's not even a failure. I, mean, there's, I got a lot more than that. Um, my second biggest failure. Wow. Um, you know, I, I, my, I think my biggest, my second biggest failure is not moving to the south earlier. Probably. You know, I, I, uh, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's funny. You know what? What happened was like. So I, I graduated college. I did the whole culinary thing, and you know, the first trip I ever took was to France. Right. So it's like. You go, you know, I never, I grew up in New York, I like, I, I didn't know there was a world beyond New Jersey, right? There was like New York, New Jersey, and then, I don't know. And then, you know, the first chance I got, I went to France, and, I, and you, know, you do that whole thing because you're, you're a chef, right? And, and it was very interesting. And, and just as a quick aside, I remember going to Italy, going to Parma, walking through a prosciutto cave, and in my grand ignorance at the age of 22, thinking, this is so cool. Why can't we have this in America? You know, and, and, and you realize that there is a whole education of sorts that most chefs in America are missing, that, that we celebrate. And there's nothing wrong with Italy and France and all that beautiful tradition there. Um, you know, a number of years later, I came to discover that we do have these incredible traditions in America. And that's part of the, the, the dialogue is not just that the South is this great place where people drink and, and have fun, but it's also the, 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 the originators, it's the hotbed, it's the seat of tradition and history. When you talk about culinary history, it is the, the, the place where we should all, whether you're from the South or not, be studying and understanding that these traditions have been there for generations, and, and, and they've been here, and they're still flourishing, and that's pretty special. And, and I think for most young chefs, myself included, I had no idea of the, these incredible traditions. And so when I did finally move to the South and, and started discovering all these things, it was, it was, you know, to say the least, it was a revelation to see that these things were here and, and, and hopefully they flourish to the next generation. And I think with chefs like Ashley and, and, and Bill and all these people, that's part of what we're trying to do in a very small way is, 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 you know, respect the traditions and the histories and all these things and hopefully you push them forward so that people understand that these things are never going to go away. Next. <laughs> In North Carolina, just come on, just, that's it. That's it. What, do you, what else do you want? <laughs> what else do you need? That's, that's all you need. I think Ashley is going to be. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think she will be a force, and she already is. But I think she will be a force of nature to deal with. And I cower at the fact that if I ever have to cook next to her, she can she can pretty much outrun me in the kitchen. So. That's it. Dean's got a question. Dean, what's your question? <laughs> Dean, don't start with me. Don't. What y'all may not know is that Edward has a five-week-old baby at home. And he's in the middle of the pit tour. So talk about your lovely new daughter. Uh, my my daughter is is has pretty much messed up my life forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really just screw, it's she's really cramping my style. It's in there. Uh, but now she's just five weeks old. She's beautiful. Um, my wife hates me because I, I get to go on all these cool places, and you know she otherwise probably would have been with me. Um, so, but yeah, it, it's you know it just brings a different perspective into everything. Um, but I can't, um, you know, it, it's 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 weird because she also she was born two days before the actual release date of the book, and there's no resentment there whatsoever. But she kind of overshadowed the release of the book. <laughs> And I never really got to say like, 
the book came out because she trumps everything. So many years later, I figure when she turns 18, we're going to sit down and have a very serious conversation about how I've resented her for the past 18 years. We're <laughs> overshadowing this big moment in my life. Tell us her name. What? Tell her name. Her name is Arden Rose Lee, um, and her Korean name is Nami. Um, which is very funny, and, and this is your sister, because that's my uncle right there, and my mom, which is his sister. So, the, she gave me this name, thinking, because all the Korean names are supposed to have a meaning, and she said, oh, we Nami. And I said, great, and it's a beautiful name. And I said, what does it mean? And it's been now six weeks, and she still hasn't told me what it means. <laughs> So I don't know what's right, and apparently it doesn't really have a meaning. I think she screwed it up and she doesn't know. So, this is my mom, by the way. This is the person that raised me. She, she is, you know. So, but anyway, that the Korean name is supposed to be this very important thing, like it's handed down, and it's supposed to have all this meaning to it. And my mom's like, I forgot. You know? So I, I, my child has a name right now that means nothing. Um, so, but anyway, but yes, she has, you know. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, it, it means I'm beautiful. Uh, yeah, well, I know, but that's not very... It's a little, <laughs> little self-absorbed. <laughs> so how did you, you and your wife meet? Um, really? You want to go there? Yeah. <laughs> you want to go there? Yeah. 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 We'll get a sanitary. No, actually, we met, we met at, a, at a, you know, very interesting, because in the days... We live in a day of e-harmony, and, 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 and we actually met at a bar, which is, I think, quite rare now. Um, and we met at a place that on, uh, it was on Wednesday night, and it was, it was like half price wine on Wednesdays. And it's so embarrassing. And, and so I was like, I, I remember meeting her and saying, listen, we both like wine and we're both cheap. Like, this is a good start. Like, we've, already got, we've got a foundation. And... Um, yeah, it's, it's like the worst, and it's like the tackiest place in the world, it's like the worst, but yeah, there's, so there's still hope going to bars, there's still a reason to go to bars, for single people out there, still go to bars, because you never know, you can find, anyway, yeah, that's how I met, there's nothing like sacred or beautiful about it, we met at a bar, at price wine. I bought her a cheap bottle of wine, we talked all night, and, and, and that's it, the rest is history, so. All right, well, thank you, everyone. Have a great night.